welcome to Faith Center Imus. Thank you for joining us in the service today. Now, let us listen to the ongoing message. Part 2 na po tayo. Part 2, to perfection. Sabihin natin ulit, to perfection. And this time, we're going to talk about the dangers. The dangers of not progressing. Or the dangers of not maturing. May danger pala. Alright? So, the book of Hebrew is actually warning us, may danger. Ha? Huh? May peril. Pag hindi ka nag-progress, merong peril or may danger. So, bilang isang uh, apostle, they say it's Apostle Paul who wrote this, bilang asa, isang apostle, he would like to warn us so that you don't go to that danger. Alright? Binabalaan na tayo so that we don't go to that danger. Okay? At alam naman po natin that if we continue to become babies, we are weak. Alam niyo po bang weak ang mga babies? Ha? In, in fact, some of the babies, they cannot walk yet because their knees are feeble. No? Malambot pa ang mga tuhod, wala pang mga muscles, they don't have muscles, so you have to carry them. And who would like to be trapped in a baby's body? No? Sino bang gusto matrap sa katawan ng bata? Tanda-tanda mo na. There's this condition, uh, they call it um, syndrome X. Right? Because they don't have a word for it. Alright? And this child, actually she's already 20 years old, but she's trapped in the body of a 4-year-old because of this syndrome X, wherein an adult is trapped in the body of a baby. So this child has to be carried. Sino stroller din po yan. Alright? And uh, she's being fed through bottle. Sinusubuan pa ho. Alright? And... Um, uh, the thing about this child is everything is normal in her body. Kaya lang po, hindi po siya nagpo-progress, hindi po siya nagmamature. Okay? So we don't want that. Amen po ba? We don't want to be trapped in a body of a baby. Because with that, you become weak. You become dependent on other people. It's not good that we are dependent on other people. Halimbawa, merong may sakit sa inyong bahay. Alright? Would you call on your leaders para ipagpray lang yung anak mo? Of course not. What is the best thing to do? You yourself, you pray for your own child. Amen? Hindi yung tatawagin mo yung leader mo. Or you will call on your pastor. Pastor, please pray for my child. That is uh, uh, infancy. Alright? Uh, para kang baby niya na nakadepend ka pa sa leader. Dapat po yan, you know your authority in Christ and you're able to lay your hands on your child and rebuke the sickness and declare healing on that child. Amen po ba? That is walking in victory. So you don't walk in victory when you have weaknesses, when you stay as a child. Now, hindi ko naman po inaalis na lahat tayo eh meron pang weaknesses. Kasi nga po, we are still a work in progress. Amen po ba? May naalala po ako isang story. There was this, uh, there was this three pastors. Pastor ah, may weaknesses sila. There were these three pastors on a boat, right? They were on a boat, and they were telling stories about each other. Habang nasa kalagitnaan sila ng lake, nag-fishing, fishing sila, sabi nung isang pastor, alam mo ba, ako may kahinaan ako. I have this weakness. Sabi niya, ah, ganun ba? Ikaw may weakness ka, oo. Sabi niya, ang weakness ko, I am a gambler. Sabi nung pastor, sabi nung dalawa, oh! Nag, nagsusugal ka? You're a gambler? Nagulat yung dalawang pastor. Finally, yung second pastor, sabi niya, ako rin, may weakness ako eh. Meron din ako, I have a weakness. And then the second pastor said, my, my weakness is, I'm a cheat. I'm a cheater. Nandadaya ako. So nagulat na naman yung dalawang pastor, nandadaya ka? Alright? And um, the third pastor, Tumahimik lang. Sabi ng dalawang pastor, oh, ikaw naman. Kami dalawa, nagsabi na kami ng weaknesses namin. Sabi nila, ikaw naman magsabi. Sabi ng isang pastor, ay hindi, ayoko, ayoko. Ay, hindi pwede. Dapat sabihin mo rin sa amin. You have to tell us what your weakness is. Hindi, hindi, hindi pwede. Pumunta na tayo sa, ang tawag doon, sa shore. Sa shore. Let's go to the shore. I have to get off this boat. Sabi niya, ay, hindi pwede. You have to tell us what your weakness is. And sabi ng pastor, Sige na nga, sabihin ko na sa inyo. I'll tell you. Sabi ng third pastor, my, my weakness is, 
I am a gossip. Chismoso ako. At hindi na ako makapag-intay. Gusto ko kayo i-chismis dalawa. Ayan po. <laughs> okay? So, it's a joke. Alright? But anyway, the, the truth of the matter is, maski pastor, may weakness. Don't think we're perfect already. Mukha lang. <laughs> But, hindi po. May mga weaknesses din po ang mga pastor. So, we are still an ongoing process. In fact, if you read the, the, the book of Hebrews, sabi niya, let us Go on to perfection. So that means he's including himself. The writer himself said, let us go to perfection. So it means everybody has room for maturity. Everybody needs to mature. It is so important that we go on to perfection. Otherwise, we will stagnate. Hanggang dyan ka na lang. Amen? And we don't want that. We want everyone to progress, all right? And the only way to do that, how do we become strong when we are weak, is that we are to let God work in us. You go to God. Tell Him about your weakness, all right? Tell the Lord. Admit to Him, Lord, I have this weakness. Help me, all right? And alam nyo po, tantandaan po natin to. This is something very practical. You can never change yourself. It is God who will do the changing. On your own, you can discipline yourself. But without the help of God, there's no change that's going to happen. It's the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, God working in you, wherein change can happen, wherein transformation can happen. And if that is true, then it is also true with your children. Amen. Maski ilang pingot na, matanggal na yung tenga ng anak mo, hindi po magbabago yan sa pamamagitan nyo lamang. And it's so frustrating sometimes we, 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 we try to change our children. Our children will never change, alright? They will never change sa, sa dami na sinabi natin. Hindi, pa kayo napap, hindi nyo ba napapansin? Naubos na yung isesermon nyo, paulit-ulit na lang, ganun pa rin. You know why? It is God who can change a person's life. So you ask God, God, help me. I know I cannot do this. I know I have to depend on you. Only you, Lord, can change my child's life. Alam nyo, without sweat, your child will change. Amen. All right? You just have to wait for the perfect timing. Of course, hindi ko po sinasabi na titigil na tayo ng sermon. There's, the, there's a part of us that need to remind our child on what to do pero hindi po mawawala ang uh, you know sabi nila kasalbahihan ng isang bata or foolishness ng bata sa pagbubugbog ng bata we do not do that amen we spank a child to remind him but that is not you know the only solution the solution is you allow God to work in his life now as true as that is you cannot also change your spouse Amen. Hindi kayo ang magbabago sa spouse nyo. You know, if you are frustrated, guess what? You can call on God, ask for His help, depend on Him, and allow God to work in your spouse's life. Sa asawa nyo. Amen. We can never change a person. By this time, ha? alam na ng mga misis at mister yan, hindi ko kaya baguhin ang asawa ko. Amen po ba? Ay, Amen. <laughs> Alam na po natin yan. And it's really useless to force them. Kasi naiinis lang yan sa atin. But if you allow God, Lord, kausapin nyo nga, nax. Kausapin nyo nga itong asawa ko. Alright? That would even work. Rather than ikaw ang nagsalita na nagsalita. And guess what? It doesn't work. Alright? Amen po ba? Ay, parang hina. Amen po ba? Amen. Alright. Let's have a scripture for that. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 8, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. Paul also had this weakness. He had a thorn in his flesh. All right, there was something disturbing him. At hindi niya na po makayanan. And it says here in verse 8, concerning this thing, concerning the thorn in his flesh, sabi niya, I pleaded with the Lord three times. Nagmakawa siya, Lord. Right? Three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, these are the words of the Lord, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength or my power 
is made perfect in weakness. Alright? Sabi ng Panginoon, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength or my power is made perfect in weakness. Alright? Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Alright? Sabi niya, Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So let me tell you today, if you have some weakness in your life, don't you worry. Alright? You know what you have to do? Just admit to the Lord, Lord, I have this weakness. Don't admit to people. Hindi mo kailangan admit Ay, alam mo, may kahinaan ako. Eh, ako ganito ako, chismosa ako. Huwag mo na i-admit sa tao yan. Ha? Chismis ka rin nila. So don't admit to people. Admit to God. Lord, I have this weakness. And I totally depend on you. And guess what? You know what will happen? His strength will be your strength in that area. Alright? Because you admitted to Him. You asked for His help. Right? Yung iba kasi nagpe-pretend kay Lord, Lord, kaya ko na to. Right? Now, you know what? If you do that, if you always pretend and don't ask God for help, guess what? God has no room to work in your life. But if you admit to the Lord, Lord, I need you. Kailangan kita. Kailangan kita. I, I really need you in this area in my life. Please help me. Guess what? His strength will be your strength. And what people will see is not you anymore, not your weakness anymore, but His strength in you. You yourselves will be amazed. Sabi mo, hindi ako yun ah. Si Lord yun ah. Kasi kung ako lang, if that was just me alone, I would not have been able to do it. On my own, alam ko eh, kilala ko sarili ko eh. Paano ko nagawa eh? How was I able to do that? Amen? You know, I, I have always testified to you, na ako po'y mahiyain. Hindi halata, ano? <laughs> ako po'y, ma- ba't hindi kayo natatawa? Totoo yun. Mahiyain po ako. <laughs> Alright? Mahiyain po ako. And this was brought about by uh, years of being bullied. Do you know that I was bullied when I was in grade school? Hindi pa uso yung anti-bully, ang ak- bullying, ak sayang. But anyway, I was bullied when I was in grade school. And, um, meron dalawa doon na mahilig talaga silang mag-bully. May classmates kami na mahilig mag-bully. And uh, they just do it to everyone, okay? But uh, for some reason, I think I'm their favorite na ibuli, okay? And every time I would stand up to recite in class, kung bakit naman sila tawanan ng tawanan, hindi ko maintindihan. Alam niyo yung mga gano'n, tapos ganyan na ng ganyan. <laughs> yeah, ito, ito ng kwentuhan, tapos pagtatawanan ka. So because of them, siguro mga twice, three times lang ako nag-recite, all right? But because of them, I, I had this shyness. Parang na-develop sa akin, ayoko na lang magsalita kesa pagtawanan ako. And sometimes I'm doing my best already and they would be laughing. All right? So I was traumatized by this. So inside the classroom and outside the classroom, they would always bully me. So hindi po talaga ako mahilig humarap sa tao. I could not do this. In fact, babayaran mo ako, maski bayaran mo ako, hindi ako mag-recite sa class. The only time na nag-recite ako sa class is because my teacher told me, I'm going to fail you. Okay? So, nag-aral po talaga ako doon at nag-recite ako. But that was the only time. The other teachers, hindi ako nag-recite sa kanila. Maski anong gawin mong pilit sa akin, hindi ako mag-recite. Why? Because of the traumatic experience. I was already in high school. I would not recite. Okay? Sobra pong hiya, nanginginig po ang buong lawang ko at nagkakandaiyak na ako sa sobrang trauma po na inabot po dun sa classmate. And by the way, one of those classmates already apologized to me. Pasensya ka na, bully ako nun. May nagbabago naman po talaga. So anyway, so that happened to me. And so, when this had to happen, you know, I believe the Lord prepared me for this. But when this had to happen, I still have those, you know, fears about facing people. And sabi ko, Lord, please be with me. I cannot do it without you. You know my weakness. Alam mo kung ano yung traumatizing, uh, ng, mga traumatizing things that has happened in my life. So you have to be with me, you know. And time and time again, people who come to me, Pastora, alam mo ba, parang ako yung kausap mo. At parang nangungusap ka talaga sa puso ko. And I would tell them, you know what, it's all God. Because Kung ako lang, wala ako masasabi sa inyo unang-una. Pangalawa, I don't have the boldness to do this. At pangatlo, I just know that my words will just fall flat to the ground apart from God. So I believe what you see today 
is all God, the strength of God that is in us. I tell you, depend on God, lean on Him. His strength will be your strength and you will manifest to people the strength of God and Him only. Come on! That is the truth! All right? Of course, by this time, alam po, na-develop na ako ni Lord. I'm enjoying this now. Pero meron pa rin konti. Konti lang din po sa umpisa. But, uh, you know, it is the strength of the Lord that will continue to build you up. All right? One more testimony. And um, you're all aware of this. Ako po ay isang iyaki na tao. And you know, if you don't know me and Pastor Mike, I have always depended on my husband. Alam niyo, pag tatanong niyo ako, magkano meral ko mo? Ah, hindi ko alam. Tanong mo kay pastor. Hindi ko alam mga bills to pay namin. Lahat nakadepende kay pastor. I am so dependent on Pastor Mike. Alright? Uh, uh, may magtatanong sa akin, magkano binabayaran sa ganyan? Uh, tanong mo siya, hindi ko alam eh. Lahat, lahat. Wala akong alam sa bills. Okay, binigay ko na sa kanya yan dahil ayoko na yan. Siya nagbabayan. Alright? So anyway, I'm so de- that is how dependent I am with him. Right? And so when this thing happened for him departing, alam niyo naman yan, you know, I really don't know how I was able to have the strength. Okay? To this day, dahil una, iyakin ako, mahina ang loob ko, at nakadepende lang ako kay Pastor Mike. Alright? And when this thing happened, when he departed, nagugulat po ako dahil talaga pong hindi po ako gano umiyak. Maski mga anak ko, hindi gano nag-iyakan. And to this day, I tell you, I do not know, by, by my earthly mind, I do not know how I'm able to do this. But by faith, I can tell you, this is all God. The strength, any strength that you see in me, every day strength is only by God. And I would tell myself, Lord, I am walking in a miracle every day. Every day, where is this strength coming from? And I know the strength comes from God alone. Do you have any weakness? And do you want to surpass that weakness? Depend on God alone and manifest His strength alone. Amen? Come on, bless the Lord. (laughs) Praise God. So it is about depending on God. How can we be transformed from this weakness into strength? All right? Turn to God. Alam nyo, God knows your weakness and He's not turned off. Amen? Hindi na to turn off si Lord. He loves you just the same. Amen? So He's not turned off with your weaknesses. Instead, let it draw you to God. Lord, I need you. I really need you in my life. I turn to you, Lord God. And I allow you to change me. And guess what? You will be transformed and you will allow the strength of the Lord to be seen in you. Amen? Okay, so let's continue. Why do we need to go to perfection? Why do we need to go to perfection? Because there is danger. Sabi natin lahat, danger. There is danger when we do not. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. And we're going to read again one Verse 1 to 8. At ito po yung instruction po sa atin. Therefore, sabi po, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, and of doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Sabi natin lahat, pinayagan na tayo ni Lord. Okay, so praise God, pinapayagan na tayo ni Lord. Maganda na ang foundation natin. So let us go on to perfection. Now, um, the reason is what we're going to read after. But the Lord reminded me to go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? I have to do this because uh, pag nababanggit po yung perfection, this could be uh, something that will remind you. Ibig sabihin ba magpa-perfect ka na ngayon through the flesh? Alright? Um, I was hoping not to teach on this kasi napakahaba po nito, but I have to insert this dahil some people would be teaching and they would say, ano yan, magperform ka to perfect yourself? 
Is it about doing good so that you'll become good? Okay, lahat tayo save na. We don't earn the favor of God. We don't uh, pay God, right? The reason why we do good works is because we are already favored. We are already accepted by God. This good works that we do, any good works that we do, is because of, uh, of the grace of God in our lives. But I have to explain this because, you know, some people can teach otherwise. Okay? Sabi po dito, Oh foolish Galatians! So, kausap niya mga Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Sabi natin lahat, works of the law. Okay? Works of the law, ha? may of the law nakasulat. Ha? Or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect? Ayan na yan. Perfect by the flesh. Alright? So, by the flesh, ha? Sabi. Okay. So, ito po yung nagiging parang ano. Ayun, sabihin, wala na akong gagawin. O gagawa ba ako para ma-perfect? According to this, hindi, we are perfected by, uh, by hearing of faith. Okay? So, let's continue to the next verse. Yung susunod po. Galatians also. Okay? Now, read Galatians 5.7. Sabi ko sa inyo, ang konteksto nito, works of the law. It has something to do with works of the law. Sabi dito, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision. So, ang konteksto po nito, pinipilit po ng mga Jews, yung mga Gentiles, magpa-circumcise. Okay? So, ang, ang pinag-uusapan nila, works of the law, which is in particular circumcision. Sabi niya, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. Alright? So, sabi nga ni, ni Paul, may pumipilit sa inyo ang gumawa ng works of the law, which is precisely circumcision. Yan po ang konteksto. Okay? Now, Kaya ko po sinasabi to kasi lumalabas po sa ilang teachings na pag gumawa ka na ng mabuti, works of the law na rin yun. Pag hindi ka nagkasala, if, let's say, uh, tinuro dito, uh, you know, we should, uh, we should avoid sexual immorality, we should not do sexual immorality. According to them, that is already, okay, that is already uh, works of the law. Na do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Yan po daw ay works of the law na I do not agree. Okay? This same Paul who taught this about the works of the law and precisely about circumcision also taught the next verse. Galatians pa rin po tayo ha? Galatians. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Ano po yon? Works of the flesh naman to which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Question. Sa pagsabi ba ni Paul, same book, Galatians pa rin, sinasabi ba niya, okay lang na gawin natin ito mga to? Of course, what he's saying is, do not do this. Tama? Tama. Okay. But you know what? Some preachers would say, if you teach this, then you are teaching works of the law. The reason why I warn you is because it might be taught. Alright? So, inuunahan ko na kayo. And they say that when you teach, do not do this, do not do that. Works of the Luyan. Okay? i sorry, but I could not agree. And Paul does not agree. He, Paul, who teaches grace, right? Who teaches that we are to walk in the Spirit, is also teaching the same thing. Tinuturo niya, wag kayong gumawa nito. Ito ang wag niyong gagawin. Rather, do the next one. Ito ang example niya ng what you should do. Ito ang to do. 
Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is all from the same book, same author, telling you what to do and what not to do, and those are not works of the law. Amen. Those are good works. Good works is not performance. Good works. Eh, wala ko ang sanili na kwa yung word na performance eh. Because good works lang ang nakikita ko sa Bible. Good works is not performance. Good works is from the grace of God. Punong puno ka ng biyaya ng Panginoon. Ha? Favored ka of the Lord. And that is why you are able to do good works. Amen? Okay, with that out of the way. So we're not perfecting ourselves through performance na sinasabi nila. We are perfecting ourselves by God and His grace abounding in us allows us to do the good works. Amen? Malinaw po ba yun? I have to clarify that. Right? So let's move on. So with that out of the way, Right? At least alam nyo na po yung pinaka kailangan natin malaman. Let us now go to the reason, yung danger, kung bakit kailangan tayo mag-move to perfection. It says here, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, born again na, okay? and have tasted the heavenly gift, right? and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Do we have the Holy Spirit? Alright? And have tasted the good word. Natikman nyo na ba salita ng Diyos? Amen. And the powers of the age to come, if, sabihin natin lahat, if, kung lang, kung, kung mag-fall away sila, if they fall away, what is impossible? It is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put Him to an open shame. Okay? Sabi pa dito, for the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessing. Sabi natin, receives blessing. Receives blessing from God, but if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed. Sabi natin, near to being cursed. So, malapit na, pero hindi. Okay? Near lang. Kailangan natin intindihan. Alright? And it says here, whose end is to be burned. Now, sa unang basa mo niyan, parang nakakatakot to ah. Na born again na, pero pag nagkamali at nagbear siya ng thorns, pwedeng masunog. Parang mapupunta sa impyerno. If that's just going to be your reading, mababaw lang, browsing lang, then you would think that this saved Christian pwedeng masunog sa impyerno. Okay? But we have to investigate further. If you read Hebrews, when you read Hebrews, you see it from the eyes of a person being transformed in the soul area, not in the spirit. Kasi kung in the spirit to, hindi nyo maiintindihan. Okay? But you have to see it as a person Uh, with a soul problem, not a spiritual problem. Okay? Otherwise, hindi natin maintindihan. Okay? Ang danger po of not perfecting or maturing is that of stagnation or regression. Ano po yung regression? Lumalaki ng paurong. Diba? Minsan siya sabihan, ikaw bata ka, lumalaking paurong. Diba? Paurong. Imbis na pa-progress, paurong po. Ayaw mag-mature. Ang example po dito, let's say there are people, Christian ha? Christian to. Tandaan nyo, ang kausap Christian. May mga Christian, they hold on to bitterness. Ayaw magpatawad. Alright? Sabi nila, eh, hindi. Sobra yung ginawa sa akin, hindi ko sila patatawarin. Ha, ya mo sila, ayoko sumama sa kanila kasi ginawa nila ako ng masama. Okay? Guess what? What is happening? They are actually not progressing, they are regressing. They don't want to let go. God told us, forgive as I have forgiven you. Pero sila, hindi, hindi, hindi pwede ako magpatawad. Grabe yung ginawa nila sa akin. Mamaya, eh, gawin nyo na naman sa akin yan. Ayoko, hindi na ako magtitiwala. What is happening? They are regressing. Okay? So, ito yung sinasabi ng Hebrews that 
if they do not mature, ayaw nila i-let go yung, yung, yung galit nila, yung bitterness nila, yung jealousies nila. If they don't let go, guess what will happen? They will regress. Okay? And what will happen is, it is impossible for them to renew. Ano po yung to renew? New again. Magbago. At to repent. What is to repent? To go to the top again. Yun po ang sinasabi dito. Born again sila, pero dahil, example nga lang po, ayaw nilang magpatawad, ayaw nilang uh, i-let go yung mga sama ng loob nila, what happens? Instead na mag-progress, paurong. And it is impossible, according to the warning, it is impossible for them to renew and to repent. Amen? They don't know this is already the trap of the enemy. Do you know the, the, the trap of the enemy for monkeys? Okay? They put food inside a vase na maliit po yung butas. Right? And it's enough for the monkeys to put their hands inside. But when they hold on to the food, they put a fist. Okay? Hawakan nila, naka-fist na. So of course, hindi nakakasya dun sa, sa butas. And, right, as foolish as these monkeys are, okay, they will not let go of that banana. Ha? Hindi pwede. Maputol na kamay nila, hindi nila bibitahon ang, bang, ang banana. They don't know it's a trap. Okay? Ito po yung actually nangyayari sa jungle. They don't know that this, this um, yung nyug po, right, yung coconut na may food sa loob, they don't know it's attached to a uh, a chain that entraps them and they cannot go, cannot, cannot, uh, cannot uh, leave that place because their hands are trapped. The monkeys will not let go until the hunters come, hawak pa rin yung banana. Okay? And they don't know it is them not letting go of the banana that causes them to be trapped. Okay? My question for you today is, what is your banana? <laughs> what is your banana today? Meron ba kayong ayaw pakawalan? You don't want to let go of that and it's causing you to be trapped by the enemies. Ha? Ay, hindi ko siya patatawarin. Grabe yung ginawa niya sa akin. Ha? Gagawin ba niya yan? Kristiyano pa naman kami. Ayaw niya kami patawarin. Ayaw mo rin magpatawad. Ha? Ay, hindi. Ayoko. Kasi ginawa niya ako ng ganito. Ha? Ininsulto niya ako. Grabe yung insulto niya sa akin. Do you know that that is your banana? And the enemy is not allowing you to progress because you will not let go. Who knows that if this monkey will just open his hand, he will be free. I tell you today, let go of your bananas and you will be free. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Let go of those bananas. It's a trap. And it's causing you not to progress in life. It's causing you to stay the same and even worse. Kasi itong monkey na to, dadali, dadali na yan sa kulungan. Ha? Dadali na yan sa Manila Zoo. Hindi na siya makakatakas. Alright? So, if a believer will not mature by having tight fists, alright? Not letting go of what they believe and allowing the Word of God to change them, guess what? They will remain the same. At sabi po ng salita, if he falls away, it is impossible for them to renew again, to renew their minds, to repent or to go back to the top. They are unable to change their minds. Alright? So, allow the Lord to change you. Pag sinabi ng Panginoon, anak, patawarin mo na. Huwag na tayo marami pa sinasabi. Lord, hindi siya may kasalanan eh. He's the one at fault. Bakit ako? Just let go. Just let go and be free from whatever is causing your falling away. Okay? Si Paul po, meron po mga nirebuke din ng mga Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The problem with this uh, Corinthians, they are very spiritual but their problem is they were carnal. Carnal or babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Sabi dito, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, 
But as to carnal, masyado kayo makarne. Mas, hindi kayo makarne kumakain. Ha? Makarne, masyado kayo malaman. Sensitive. As to babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. Sabi niya, hanggang ngayon ba naman? Until now, hanggang ngayon? Okay? So sabi niya, hanggang ngayon, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there is envy, strife, division among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Alright? So pinagsasabihan niya, mga kristyano, ha? Kristyano. So wag po kayo magugulat, pastora, may ganyan ba mga kristyana? Ay, oo, marami. Ang dami. Okay? Maski sa ministry, alam po na mga ministers niya, meron. Amen. Ay, lakas ng worship team. Ang <laughs> joke lang. <laughs> Meron yan. Okay? Alam nyo, galing din ako sa worship team noon. Sabi nga nila, ang pinaka-ina-atake dyan, worship team. For some reason, worship team. Okay? So, I was also in the worship team before. And there were a lot of strife, I tell you. Okay? So, um, si Pastor Mike, For years, I would tell him, ganito nangyayari dito, ganyan, ganyan. Hindi dito sa, sa ano ha, sa, nasa Las Piñas pa ako nun. Hindi po dito sa church na to. So, ganito, may nangyayari ganito, etc., etc. Sabi niya sa akin, alam mo, bumaba ka na lang. Ha? Kasi sobra talaga yung strife. There's so much strife, alright? Christian na worship leaders, ha? Nag-aaway-aaway. So anyway, I'm just opening your eyes. I'm not discouraging you to join the, the team. What I'm trying to tell you is that even in ministries, there are strife. Why? Because we are all works in progress. Kaya nga dapat po magkaintindihan tayo. Alright, so the story goes this way. Pinababa ako ni Pastor Mike. So sumunod po ako. But the thing is, I know God called me to be one of the backup leaders. Okay? So sabi ko, hindi, dapat nandun ako eh. Alam niyo, pag singer ka talaga kayo, o pag nasa ministry talaga kayo, you know you have to be there. So finally, I told Pastor Mike, sabi ko, I have to go back. It was God who called me. They did not call me. I have to go back. I have to overcome this. Ha? So maski sugatan kayo, balik lang. Balik lang ng balik. Bumalik po ako. And this time, I overcame everything with love. Ayan na, dyan na po nag-umpisa ang walk of love ko. It has been a long time process. Alright? So I walked in love. So maski uh, meron may mga star complex at superiority complex at yabangan ng yabangan. But guess what? You can overcome it every time with love. Overcome evil with love every time. Okay? So what happened was, I came back and I ministered at napaglabanan po. I did not say na nawala po yung problema. Andun pa rin, I was still in the midst of the problem, but guess what? I overcame. Yun po importante. So what I'm trying to tell you is that overcoming and maturing means, does not mean na mawawala ang problema. Andiyan pa rin. Kaya this, pero this time, hindi ka na tinatablan. Ha? Huh? You can see it happening before you, but guess what? Eh, no ngayon, wala sa akin yan. I still love you. Amen. I still love you. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, I still love you. <laughs> Alright? So I'm not discouraging you people to go into ministry. I'm just opening your eyes. Everywhere you go, there is strife. There is still envy. Bakit iba-iba level natin eh? Iba-iba eh. So, ano pa ang gagawin natin? Matuto tayong umintindi. Hindi lang yung tayo iniintindi, matuto din tayong umintindi. Walk in love all the time. Amen? Come on, bless the Lord. And that's how one of those things that you have to practice to walk in maturity. That's the walk of love. Alright? So, hindi po excuse na, hindi, ayoko na doon. Kasi, yabang-yabang nung isa eh. Kasi, ganito-ganito. Hindi po excuse yon not to go back to ministry. Guess what? If you just go down, at hindi mo pinaglabanan yon hanggang dyan ka na lang. Bakit? Hindi mo na overcome eh. So, ulit-ulit lang yan sa buhay mo. But you have to overcome. And you overcome by love. Alright? So, that happened. Let's move on. Okay? Another rebuke of Paul. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. And this time, it's not just about envy, strife. 
These are still Christians, but this time, sexual immorality. Okay? So, um, I'm just opening your eyes that, you know, Christians are not sinless. They are just forgiven. Amen? At lahat binabago pa talaga. So, I'm just opening, kasi iba parang natitisod na ko, bakit may sin ganito si sister? Guess what? Open your eyes. <laughs> this is reality. We are forgiven. We are not sinless, but we are forgiven. But, kaya nga sinasabi ng writer, let's mature. Otherwise, you'll just stay the same. Okay? So, let's go to 1 Corinthians 5.1. Are we learning? Samya, it is actually reported that there is sexually a sexual immorality among you. Sino kausap niya? Christians! Okay? And such immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. In short, mas matindi pa kayo sa Gentiles. Ito mga Gentiles, walang Diyos, pero mas matindi pa kayo, sabi ni Paul. Okay? That a man has his father's wife. This is actually the step uh, stepmother. Okay? And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned and he, that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Dapit pala, pa, hindi mo tatanggapin yan. Okay? For indeed, as ab- absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged him who has so done this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver, ito matindi to, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So that's the glo- goal. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? So sa message, uh, message translation, sabi, so get rid of this yeast. Okay, let me explain. Pastoran, hindi bibigay sa, kay satanas yung tao. <laughs> hindi po. Ibig sabihin po ay ganito. We are, grace teaches that we are forgiven. But grace is not saying it's okay to sin. Amen? Grace is saying you are free from sin. It is not saying you are free to sin. Okay? So what is grace saying? Grace is saying you are forgiven, but I'm not saying you are, uh, kung magkakasala ka, eh, okay lang. May nagtanong na po sa akin ito. Pastora, ano sasabihin ko? Yung isang member ko is committing sexual immorality. What do I tell the person? Sabihin ko ba, okay lang? Hindi po. Sabi mo sa kanya, sister, brother, ha, I do not condemn you. You know what? God has forgiven you. God loves you, mas kinagkakasala ka. Alright? But guess what? Do everything you can, ask God to help you so that you can get out of your situation. So hindi natin sabihin sa kanya, sis, okay lang yan. Sige lang, sige lang, okay ka lang. Hindi po okay. Alright? You do not say it's okay. So grace says, do we sin all the more so that grace may abound? Ang sagot? Certainly not. So grace does not say it's okay to sin. Grace is telling you if you have sinned, right? It's not, it's not okay. If you have sinned, you are forgiven. Okay? Pero grace, the grace himself, will help you get out of your situation. Amen? Okay. So ang sinasabi dito, paano gagawin sa isang tao nagkasala? There are two things that you have to do. First, Rebuke that person. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo sabihin, okay lang yan. Ha, sister? Okay lang yan. Nagsisexual immorality ka. Okay. Mali po. Ang sabi po sa 1 Timothy 5.20, those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all when that the arrest also may fear. So if they are sinning, sis, hindi, hindi tama yan. You know, humingi ka ng tulong kay Lord. Ha? Magtanong-tanong ka kung paano ka makakalabas dyan sa sitwasyon na yan. So, rebuke them. Do not say, okay lang yan. Sige, kawawa ka naman. Dalawa asawa mo. Hindi ganun yun. Okay? And then, after you have rebuked the person, you are to forgive and comfort. You have to reaffirm your love to him. So, sinabi po yan. I'm teaching you this because, uh, you know, how do we mature? How do we see sin? How do we treat other people, this is how you do it. 
Though we rebuke natin yan because we do not approve of sin, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, let's go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, sabi dito, But if anyone has caused grief, so nagkasala, may ginawang mali, he has not grieved me, sabi ni Paul, but all of you to some extent. And then sabi, not to be too severe. This punishment which was inflicted by the majority is sufficient. So yung pag-rebuke nyo sa kanya, hindi nyo tinanggap siya, yung, yung, hindi, nyo, hindi nyo tinanggap yung kasalanan niya, is sufficient for such a man. So that on the contrary, sabi niya, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him. Lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love to Him. Okay? So, two steps lang po. Meron pong ganyang pangyayari. Kilala nyo. Do not approve of it. Do not approve of the sin. But rather say, hindi tama yan sis. Humingi ka ng tulong sa Panginoon. Matutulungan ka ng Panginoon. Then number two, na-rebuke nyo na. Sinabi nyo hindi Okay. Forgive and comfort. Sis, kamusta na? You know what? Pinapatawad ka naman namin. Okay lang yan, okay? Okay na, na hindi ko sinasabi okay yung kasalanan. What I'm trying to say, you know, try to comfort that person at paalam nyo sa kanya, mahal pa rin kita. Okay? Ayaw naman ng Panginoon na masobrahan ng kalungkutan yung tao na magigive up na siya. Okay? So, uh, I know some of you, you counsel some people. So, these are the words I have for you. I know this is very useful. Okay? So, ito po ang nangyayari. Kaya po nire-rebuke ni Paul itong mga Corinthians. Ito po ang nangyayari sa kanila. Hindi na sila nag-progress. Ang tagal-tagal na nilang Christian, hanggang ngayon, baby pa rin. Kaya sabi niya, this is the danger. If you do not progress, you will regress. Instead na magpatuloy kay sa Panginoon na nangyayari, nagpapatuloy sa mundo. Amen? Amen? Okay? So, not maturing and staying as babes means you are prone to sin. You will be prone to sin. Okay? Ano pong nangyayari doon? Ibig sabihin, ang buhay nyo, hindi victorious. You know, sin can cause a lot of damages in our life. You will hurt your family. You will hurt friends. You will hurt your own life if you continue to sin. Kaya po itong let us go on to perfection, this is for our benefit. Amen? It's for our benefit. So, sabi dito, by not maturing, believers are not able to discern good and evil and they willfully sin. And by doing this, they put Christ to open shame. Ano ibig sabihin nun, they put Christ to open shame? Ano, ito yung mga taong, they give God a bad name. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin na nadudungisan ang mga Kristiyano dahil sa isang Kristiyan na gumagawa ng hindi maayos. Okay? You give Christianity a bad name. Bad reputation ang binibigay mo. Okay? So, dapat nga po mag-progress tayo. Sabihin natin ulit to perfection. If we do not move to maturity, this is regression, paurong po. Now question, ito po bang mga nagkakasala nito, are they saved? Yes, with a big yes. Yes po, they are saved. It's just that they are not living the new life that God has given them. It is just that they are not living victoriously. Who knows that if you commit sexual immorality, a sakit ng ulo yan, you will always live in fear. Amen. Ang hirap niyan. Ayaw mo ipagpalit yon sa buhay na maayos na ibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Walang iniisip na takot. Walang iniisip na condemnation. Amen. So, this is an offer for us to go to the next level, to the higher level. Are they saved? Yes, they are saved. It's just that life is not so good. It's not so good if you continue in immaturity. Amen. Alright? So, let's continue. Meron pa sinabi dito, eh, baka ma-confuse tayo. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it, sa Hebrew 6-7, bears herbs. Okay? Can we have the herbs? Bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. So, kung tayo daw na nakakapakinig ng salita ng Diyos. Guess what? Dapat namumunga tayo. Amen? Namumunga at yung mga bunga natin nagiging useful. Alright? And what happens? Receives blessing. Sabihin natin, receive blessing. 
So when you mature, blessed ka na, lalo ka pang mabe-bless. Amen? Blessed ka na, lalo ka pang mabe-bless. But let's continue. Ito naman yung opposite. But if it bears thorns and briars, ano yung thorns and briars? Ayan po. Tinik. It is rejected and near to being cursed. Near lang. Hindi kayo i-curse ni Lord. Pero near to being cursed. Whose end is to be burned. Alright? So, ito yung mga taong kristyano, pero puro sila tusok-tusok. Para silang mga durian. Gusto mong patawarin, yakapin, pero ang baho nila. Ha? Pero natutusok ka sa kanila. Ha? Ang bait-bait mo sa kanila, papatawarin mo. Kaya kada niyayakap mo para silang mga porcupine. Natutusok ka ng kanilang mga thorns. When we have that picture? Ayan. Yung porcupine, meron ba? Okay, these are porcupine and durian Christians. Every time you want to embrace them, tuk, natutusok ka na naman sa kanila, nasasaktan ka. That's why you say, okay, I love you but from afar. Thank you. <laughs> okay? I love you but from afar. So, the effect is, ang nangyayari daw po, pag laging thorns and briars, yung pong produce nila, ang sabi, is to be burned. So, ang ibig sabihin po nito, hindi kayo pupuntang impyerno. Kung kayo po ay parang mga uh, maraming tusok-tusok na pinaproduce sa buhay nyo, hindi kasi kayo nagmamature, gusto nyo lang, hawak nyo yung galit nyo yan, ayaw nyo bitawan. Okay? Ang nangyayari lang daw po, eh para kang tusok-tusok na kristyano. Ha? Hindi lumalapit ang tao sa iyo, iniiwasan ka. Okay? At pagkatapos, yung produce mo, wala na magagawa dyan kundi sunugin na lang kaysa naman makasakit pa. Hindi ikaw ang susunugin. Yung produce mo ang susunugin. Alright? Wala pong iniwan yan doon sa binasa po nating scripture. Let me show you the scripture. In, let me see. In 2 Corinthians 5.10. Na-discuss ko na to sa inyo but you really have to know this. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad. Alright? At pagkatapos po, kung good po yung work natin sa 1 Corinthians 3.50 naman po, if anyone's work is burned, ayan, he will suffer loss. Okay? okay? Basahin na lang po natin. Each one's work will become clear for the day will dis- declare it because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. So, I'm trying to explain to you Hebrews 6. It's not about you being burned in hell. It's about your works. Na dahil tusok-tusok yan at nakakasakit ng iba, ay eh susunugi na lang. Pero wala kang reward. That's the bad part about it. Pero hindi ka masusunog sa impyerno. Okay? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi ka masusunog sa impyerno. Okay? Alright. Okay, let's continue. Hebrews But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Sabi natin, accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work. Sabi natin, my work and labor of love, which you have shown toward His name in that you have ministered to the saints, And do minister. Ito po yung mga things that accompany salvation. These are the better things. Ano po yun? Work, labor of love, ministering to the saints. Yan po ang better things that accompany salvation. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. Maging masipag tayo. Saan? So work and labor of love, ministering to the saints, and do minister. We are to be diligent. At sabi pa dito, to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish. Ano yung sluggish? Tamad. Mabigat ang katawan. Okay? But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit 
the promise. All right? At ang tinutukoy po ng Panginoon is that when He spoke to Abraham in Hebrews 6.13, okay? Tandaan po natin, God is a rewarder. Sabihin natin, God is a rewarder. He wants to reward us. Kaya nga, sabi niya, uh, continue to do this. You know, minister, work, and labor. Alright? Why? Because He wants to reward us. Hebrews 6.13 says, For when God made a promise to Abraham because He could swear by no one greater, He swore by Himself. Diba tayo ganito? I promise. Swear to God. Eh, yun yung mas mataas pa sa atin. God has no one higher than Himself. Kaya sabi niya, I swear to myself. And what did He swear? Ito po ang swear ng Panginoon. Surely, blessing, I will bless you. Okay? In multiplying, I will multiply you. And so, after he had patiently endured, si Abraham po, he obtained the promise. Alright? So, gusto i-prove sa atin ng Panginoon. Ito. Gustong-gusto niya tayo i-reward. Okay? Are you blessed already today? But guess what? He wants to bless you more. In blessing, He wants to bless you more. So imitate those who through faith and patience endured and obtained the promise. So ang sinasabi niya, continue to do good works. Nothing wrong with good works. It is not gaining the approval of God. Approve ka na! Sabi mo sa katabi mo, approve ka na! You're not doing this to be approved by God. You're already approved. But guess what? When you do good works, these are the better things that accompany salvation and you will be blessed. Blessed ka na, ibe-bless ka pa lalo. That's why He swore. Sabi niya, I swore to myself. Wala na mas pata sa akin eh, sabi niya. I swore to myself. In blessing, I will bless you more. In multiply, I will multiply you more. Ano po connection? You do good works. You continue to minister. In blessing, I will bless you more. Bless ka na nga, pero I'm a rewarder. I will continue to bless you even more. Amen. And in multiplying, are you multiplying right now? I will multiply you by more and more. Okay? And he swore to his name. Heaven is not even greater than Him. Kaya hindi na siya makaswear sa heaven. Sabi niya, sa akin na lang. O pangalan ko na gamit ko. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiply, I will multiply you. Amen? God wants to reward you. Come on, bless the Lord. Why do we need to go on to perfection? He is a rewarder. He wants to reward you more. Amen? Eh hindi naman niya pwede i-reward ang hindi gumagawa ng tama. Okay? Nag, nag, puro tinik na, i-reward pa rin niya? Of course not. That's why he said, let's move on to perfection. Let's go on to those better things that accompany salvation. Why? In blessing, He will bless us. In multiplying, He will multiply us. Amen? Come on, let's bless the Lord. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you have learned principles from the Word of God that will change your life forever. Our messages are available in DVD and audio formats. You may contact us at the following phone numbers. 046-471-3516 and 046-515-7459. If you want to sow to assist us in proclaiming the gospel, you may deposit to Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship, BPI Savings Account Number 1283-139235 Nueno Branch, Imus, Cavite Or you may visit us at our church 